All right, guys, so uh, we're going to do uh, our next tutorial on rates of appearance, rates of disappearance for uh, reacting some products, right? And so appearance would be the formation of products, the disappearance would be the, the loss of the reactants as they become the products. All right, so uh, for this particular tutorial, right, uh, I've written the key information up here on the board. So uh, if you're watching this from afar, right, this is essentially what we'll be doing. Uh, those of you in my class, right, this would uh, accompany ChemQuest number 42. Uh, pro Oops, wrong page. Oh, yeah, that's the right page. Uh, particularly the back page, numbers one and two, right? So we're going to walk through the steps of how to tackle these types of questions, all right? So essentially what we're gonna to try to calculate is uh, over time, based on the information given, we should be able to fill in the values on this table, right? And likewise, we should be able to then calculate our rates uh, of appearance for iodine, right? Which is that guy over there. All right, so uh, we'll start with these missing values. What we have to consider is what this table is telling us, right? So here, this is over time, right? So in intervals of 200 seconds, Right? And then in this last column here, we have some information about how much of that iodine ion is forming in solution during those intervals, all right? Now, because we know this information and we have a balanced reaction up there, which is a really, really key step, we should be able to fill in these values, just kind of using some uh, addition subtraction. That's really all it is, okay? And then using our mole ratios to kind of make sure we're, we're, we're doing things in the right proportions. Okay, so uh, the typical thing to do here, right, is to take the given information, right, and we gotta find our difference, okay? So in the case of uh, right here, so for example, so between zero uh, seconds and 200 seconds in this interval, we have an increase in iodine of 0 0.0021. Right? So that's a positive 0 0.0021 moles increase there, right? In this next interval, right, we increase by 0 0.0011, and in the next interval, we increase by a positive 0 0.0007. Okay? And again, all I'm doing in that case, right, is I'm taking the difference between this number, so this minus this, so 0 0.0021. Minus zero is a positive 0 0.0021. 0 0.0032 minus 0 0.0021 is 0 0.0011 and so on. So that's where those numbers came from, all right? Now, I know how much iodine is appearing during those time intervals, right? And so from that, I can figure out how much uh, hydrogen sulfate are, uh, I'm producing here. And likewise, how much of this ion I'm losing and how much of this ion I'm losing. And I can do that because I have a balanced reaction, right? Okay, so my coefficients in this reaction. Notice here I have no coefficient, that just indicates one, right? That means that uh, this uh, ion right here, of hydrogen and sulfate, right, that ne with a negative one charge, that is going to form at a rate that is triple the rate of my iodine formation, right? So since I'm starting with zero, if this forms during that time interval, 0 0.0021 moles, I'm going to triple that for this ion because this is gonna form three times as fast. So all I would have to do then is take that number times three, right? And that would give me 0 0.0063, all right? That makes sense, right? So the next step then is between 200 seconds and 400 seconds, my change for iodine is 0 0.0011. So again, my change is going to be triple. So here I'm going to add plus 0 0.0033. I need to add three times as much, right? So that would give me 0 0.0096, all right? And then here, since my change is 0 0.0007, here my change will be plus 0 0.0021, all right? Which would give me 0 0.0117, okay? 
okay? So again, what did I do? I found my change for the I.9, which is my given values, right? And then I found the, the difference between those numbers as we go, right? And because I have a three to one ratio, whatever my difference is here, I need to multiply it by three and then add it to the, the previous value for, for this ion, right? So again, I've got plus 0 0.0021 here. That means I need to add plus 0 0.0063, right? So zero plus 0 0.0063 is that. Here I've got plus 0 0.0011. So I'm gonna triple that difference. I'm gonna go plus 0 0.0033 to get that and so on down. Right? So my same logic then of course applies here. If this disappears at this rate, right? At what rate will my iodate ion disappear? Okay? So here it should be a one-to-one -one ratio. So if this go increases by 0 0.0021, because my mole ratio is one-to-one, -one, this one will also change by 0 0.0021. But this is a reactant, right? So rather than Adding 0 0.0021, what am I going to do? I'm going to subtract 0 0.0021. So here, between here and here, it's minus 0 0.0021, right? Which would give me 0 0.0084. All right? Here, the difference of 0 0.0011, but I'm going to subtract it. So minus 0 0.0011, and that will give me. 0 0.0073 and then here I'm going to subtract 0 0.0007 to get 0 0.0066 all right so again one more time now in our first one here notice from iodate to or from iodine to our hydrogen sulfite right uh, what we have here is a 1 to 3 ratio. So just like here, where we increased at a triple the rate that iodine increased, here we're going to decrease at triple the rate. Or we can compare this to this, right? Uh, this, will, this decreases at this rate, we're going to decrease at three times that rate for this guy, right? So here I'm going to go minus 0 0.0063. And that should give me 0 0.0294. Here would be minus 0 0.0033. And that would give me 0 0.0261. And then here, minus 0 0.0021 to get 0 0.0240. Okay? So again, all I'm doing is I'm taking my given information to find the difference between them, right? Ending minus start, right? And that gave me those values, right? I took my mole ratio, right? To figure out what my value should be for my other reactants or products. And then thing to remember, if it's a reactant, we're subtracting. If it's a product, we are adding those values. So it's really that simple, just addition, subtraction. It's just lots of numbers to kind of get figure out it, okay? So these little values right here, I'm just showing you guys what I'm adding or subtracting from. Right? If it's a negative, I'm subtracting it, obviously, because it's positive and adding. All right? So that's how we fill out those values. So it's these numbers really that we want. Right? Here, 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 here. Okay? And so, um, you guys don't have to put these little carrots in there showing what you're adding and subtracting by. That, that's not a necessity. I just did it for you guys for, uh, to illustrate what's happening. Okay? So, we've done that. Now, uh, number two on that, that page, right? We want to calculate our rates of appearance and disappearance, right? Uh, I'm sorry, rates of appearance for the eye that I Okay? And uh, the way we calculate the rate of appearance. Right? Essentially, it's the change in concentration divided by the change in time. Right? And we usually measure concentration of solutions in what's called molarity. Right? So, uh, molarity is capital M. Right? So the way I'm going to solve these is molarity divided by seconds. So molarity divided by seconds. Now, 
probably a better way to write that because here our values are given in moles, not molarity, right? It's, it's just telling you the same thing, but it's just paying a little bit closer attention to each of the units involved, right? Which is going to be change in moles. Sorry. Right? So change in molarity over change in seconds. This is going to be change in moles over liters times change in seconds. Alright? So really, all we're going to do now is plug in some values. Right? So, what's my change in moles? Right? We get that from our table. So we could actually do this for any of them. We're just going to do it for the iodine ion here for this particular question. But we could do our rate of disappearance over here, rate of appearance for any of these now that we've filled in all these values. So we'll just do it for iodine. Alright? So, again, change in moles divided by liters times the change in seconds. Okay? So, um, I'm actually grab my eraser. That has space to work through this. All right, I need to write this formula up over here. Change in moles over meters times change in seconds. All right, now we've got that reference point there. Okay, so we want to calculate the rate of appearance for iodine, for the iodine ion, for different time intervals because that rate is actually going to change over time. And we'll talk more about that in class. But um, so between zero and two hundred seconds, right? We have, we go from 0 to 0.0021 moles during that time, right? So, what is my change in moles? Now, I've actually already calculated that when I tried to fill in this table earlier, right? That number I wrote off the side of here, a positive 0.0021, that is my change in moles, right? So that's that little number that goes right there. So for A, I'm going to go 0.002, actually let me do this in a different color. Point zero zero two one, right? Moles divided by, right? So again, I'm going to go over liters. Now you notice right up here, our, our volume is 0.45 liters, right? It's usually going to be given to you in the information of the question. So I'm going to go divided by 0.45 times. Right, uh, my change in time. So again, so between zero and two hundred seconds, how much time was that? Two hundred seconds. Right. And so when I do that calculation, I should get a number that looks like two point three times ten to the negative five big M over S, which is molarity per second. Right. You could also leave it in moles over liters times uh, seconds if you want to. All right, I just think it's easier to write, and it's the same thing. <coughs> okay, so between 200 and 400 seconds. Okay, <coughs> my next equation here. I'll draw a line in between these so we don't get too confused with my increment for space. All right. So I'm gonna go between 200 and 400 seconds. Right? So what's my difference between these two numbers? 0 0.0011, right? So my top number is 0 0.0011. I'm going to divide that by uh, 0.45 liters times 200 seconds. Okay, so why is it 200 seconds again? Because again, it's the change in time. So I'm comparing this interval, the difference between 400 and 200 is 200 seconds, all right? And so when I do that, I should get a value of 1.2 times 10 to the negative five molarity per second, all right? And then our last one, okay, between 400 and 600 seconds here, these two values and it follows over. My difference between these numbers is 0 0.0007. So I'm going to go to 0 0.0007 over 0 0.45 times 200 seconds. Again, between 400 and 600 seconds here. How much time is that? That is, I'm going to change this. There we go. 
that is times 200 seconds again. All right, and that calculation should give me 7.8 times 10 negative 6 molarity per second. And that's that. That is the, the first installment uh, for our kinetics unit, right? Again, all we're doing is we're taking the information given, right, and the mole ratios, finding the difference, the change in the time interval, applying a proportional change to the rest of the stuff involved with the reaction. And that proportion emerges, again, from our mole ratio, right? So if our iodine ion changes by this amount here, right, because we have three times as much of this as this, right, we're going to triple that amount of change. So if this changes by 0 0.0021, this one needs to change by three times as much, right? And we add it, we add it to this one because this is a product. We apply the same sort of proportional change to the reactants, but we're subtracting in that case because our concentration of reactants goes down. Once you have the information in your table, it is helpful, but not necessary to identify how much of a change occurs just because that makes it easier when you get to actually calculating the rate. The rate is found by taking our change in moles, so these little numbers I use to add or subtract, divided by the liters, which is usually given to you in a question, times the number of seconds for that interval, right? And so in each of these cases, our time interval was 200 seconds, okay? 200 seconds between the first and the last measure, all right? Then we plug those numbers in, and then our units, of course, are going to be molarity per second. And we could actually add a little iodine. Right? What, what is it? What's changing by that? Okay? Uh, and that's that.